Diabetic ketoacidosis is an acute metabolic complication of type 1 diabetes but can also occur in type 2 diabetes less commonly. Before getting into detail of diabetic ketoacidosis, let me give you a short review of mechanism of action of insulin and pathophysiology of diabetes. Insulin is a powerful anabolic hormone produced and secreted by pancreatic beta cells in response to blood glucose. Insulin causes transport and uptake of glucose into certain cells in the body, thus providing a major source of energy. This glucose is stored as energy reserve in the form of glycogen. And it is also a building block for biosynthesis of lipids, proteins, and nucleotides. In diabetes, there is either absolute deficiency of insulin due to pancreatic beta cell destruction, or there is peripheral resistance to insulin action due to genetic and environmental factors. Therefore, most diabetic patients need exogenous insulin for survival. Failure to take insulin is the most common precipitating factor that leads to diabetic ketoacidosis. Although there are other factors such as infection, trauma, and stressors that are associated with the release of counter-regulatory hormone catecholamine, epinephrine, which block any residual insulin action and stimulate the secretion of glucagon, which is an insulin antagonist. Insulin deficiency decreases peripheral utilization of glucose by tissues, which is now accumulating in blood. While at the same time, as the cells are not getting glucose, which is their main source of energy, pancreas will secrete glucagon. Glucagon initiate lipolysis in fat cells, and proteolysis in muscle cells. Their breakdown products are used by liver for gluconeogenesis, which further exacerbate hyperglycemia, usually in the range of 250 to 600 mg per deciliter. This hyperglycemia exceeds renal threshold for reabsorption of glucose and glucose urea occurs. Kidney excrete more water to dissolve excess glucose, inducing an osmotic diuresis and thus polyuria, causing a profound loss of water and electrolytes. Dehydration caused by renal water loss triggers the osmoreceptors of the thirst center in brain, which causes intense polydipsia. Another major effect of insulin deficiency is the activation of ketogenic machinery. The process of lipolysis initiated by glucagon also produces free fatty acid. When free fatty acid reach liver, they are esterified and oxidized in hepatic mitochondria, producing ketone bodies that are acetoacetone and beta hydroxybutyric acid. Beta hydroxybutyric acid serve as an energy source in the absence of insulin mediated glucose utilization, and it is a protective mechanism in case of starving. Now, the rate at which ketone bodies are formed usually exceed the rate at which they are utilized by peripheral tissues, leading to their accumulation in blood ketonemia and also ketonuria. The ketone bodies have a low pH and therefore they turn blood more acidic causing metabolic acidosis. The body initially neutralized the change with bicarbonate buffering system, but this system quickly overwhelms and another compensatory mechanism is required. One such mechanism is hyperventilation to lower the blood carbon dioxide levels. It is a form of compensatory respiratory alkalosis. So, 
The clinical manifestation of diabetic ketoacidosis include fatigue because the cells do not receive glucose or energy, nausea and vomiting caused by electrolyte depletion, severe abdominal pain caused by acute hyperglycemia, deep labored breathing also known as kusmol breathing that is a form of compensatory mechanism for metabolic acidosis, dehydration due to volume loss, polyuria and polydipsia that are already explained.